YouTube. Um, turn my music down. So it's Candy's Cam, and I'm coming to you with a repeat redo video for my HSG procedure. Um, first video was bad quality, so I'm just gonna redo it and repeat everything I said. Hopefully, I can get everything out. Um, but anyways. My journey, my HSG procedure was yesterday. The HSG procedure is where they insert um, some contrast dye into your fallopian tubes. It's almost like a pap smear, um, but they put the contrast dye into each fallopian tube on each side to make sure each each tube is clear. If the tubes, if the dye doesn't go through, that means that the if the contrast dye does not go through the tubes, that means your tubes are probably blocked or have some scarring or something's going on there that isn't quite right. So that's why most people get the procedure just to make sure that you're clear and your eggs are getting through and everything's implanting where it needs to and everything is right. So that's what I had done yesterday. So my journey, um, me and my husband been trying to conceive on and off for about a year or so. Um, hadn't been successful so we went to see a fertility specialist last month and of course the first thing they want to do is um, do blood samples on both of us check our labs they did vaginal ultrasound on me on my first appointment which was not expected but <laughs> it happened and it needed to happen um, after the vaginal ultrasound they also did a semen analysis um, when I went back for my next appointment they did another vaginal ultrasound and thankfully, the um, I think she was a medical assistant, she told me, just be prepared for every time you come in and go ahead and have a vaginal ultrasound. It's probably going to happen every time you have an appointment. So, I'm glad she told me that because I had no idea. I'd rather be prepared than not. Um, yeah, so after that, I was scheduled for my, oh yeah, my second vaginal ultrasound was during my period. They said, yeah, they want you to have, you. they want you to be on your period when you're getting that ultrasound done. Because I was confused at first. At first, I was like, are you sure y'all want to do this today? Because my period's on. They said, yeah, that's when we want to do it. So, that's just the FYI. It's kind of gross at the same time. But, that's what they want. That's what they get. <laughs> um, after that appointment, I was scheduled for my HSG procedure. They want this procedure to be done, I think, between days 6 and 12. I got mine done on cycle day 8, um, which was yesterday. And for me... My journey is a little different because I'm allergic to contrast dye, and that's what they use during the procedure. Um, I had an MRI sometime last year, and I was allergic to the contrast dye. I found out afterwards with my skin. I have paper skin, and after that procedure, I was scaly, itching, red, rashy, everything. So I let the doctors know I was allergic to the contrast dye, so they they scheduled my HSG procedure. They didn't want it to be done in the office at the fertility clinic. They scheduled it to be at the hospital. So my appointment was at 9.45 in the morning. Um, I was to be there at 9.45. So for my prep, basically I was supposed to take prednisone and Benadryl. So I took 50 milligrams of prednisone. Um, 24 hours before the procedure. Then I took it again 12 hours before. And then one hour before the procedure, I took the prednisone. And also one hour before my procedure, I took Benadryl, 50 milligrams. And also I took two Motrins for pain, just to uh, take it prophylactically, um, just to prevent any pain or prevent any worsening pain from what I hear may occur. So I also took that um, an hour before the procedure. So I got to my procedure, to the appointment, and it was at a building kind of down the road from the hospital. But it was a part of the hospital, but it wasn't attached to it. It was about two minutes away. And I got there. They said, oh, we didn't know you were allergic to contrast dye. And I'm like, they said the doctor didn't tell us. So, of course, they did all this calling around because they said, well, technically, they didn't care to do it there because it's a safety measure, which I understand because I'm a nurse. They didn't want to do it there because they may have not had the right equipment and right training to you know, take care of me if something were to happen. So I was okay with that. They ended up sending me to the actual hospital, to radiology in the hospital. So I got to the hospital part, 
and went in for my procedure. At first they said, well, they don't have any openings at the hospital. And I was mad because they said I would have to wait to 2.30. Mind you, it's already 9.30 in the morning. And my sister had to be gone. My sister took... My sister went with me to the procedure and she planned on going back home at 3 o'clock that day after everything was done because you have to have somebody to drive you home. Um, but I got to the hospital when I got to the, well they told me I would need to get to the hospital at 2.30. I ended up getting there right after 9.30 because someone called back thankfully and said, okay, we have an opening now so you can head to the hospital right now and get your procedure done. So I was so happy. Cause we were only like literally two minutes away, two minutes down the road, and I did not want to wait till two thirty. Um, so, went to the hospital, and just to FYI, you can eat before the procedure. You can eat. <laughs> you don't have to be NPO for this procedure. So eat, make sure you eat and drink, so your stomach not growling, um, unless you don't want to eat. But I ate because good thing I did. My sugar gets low sometimes, and if I don't eat, I start shaking. And I just wanted to eat, so I ate before the procedure, and it was okay. Got to the hospital, um, didn't have a long wait, went to registration. Um, after registration, they took me back. I had a PA and like a radiology technician. I went inside the room. They gave me a gown to put on. I kept on my bra and my shoes. I put on my gown, laid on the table. They had a like one of the square, big square pads under you for leaking and stuff. Make sure you have on a pad when you go for your HSG procedure. Make sure you put on one right before you get to the place because you're probably going to need it. You're going to be leaking or bleeding or something possibly. So make sure you already have one on or have one with you because the hospital happened to not have it when I was finished or they couldn't find it or something and I already had some thankfully. So I got in the room for my HSG procedure. They had everything laid out on the table already. I laid on the table, waited for the PA to come in, the physician assistant. Um, laid on the table with the gown on. The gown was closed in the front, open in the back. Laid on the table. They put a warm blanket over me. Thankfully, I didn't have to say nothing because I am cold natured. I stay freezing. Even though it wasn't too cold in there, but still, it was nice to them to um, put a blanket on me. The technician told me she had three of them before, and it feels like basically like double of a period cramp, but I told her I don't really get period cramps. Mine aren't too bad, so that kind of sucks for me now that I'm going to have this procedure, and I really don't even have period cramps like that, and it's going to be worse than period cramps, so I don't know what to expect, but I took it easy. I wasn't really too, too nervous. However, on my way to the hospital, I felt like my face was itching. My sister said I was paranoid. I didn't have no contrast. I just felt like I was itching, so I think I might have been nervous. So, procedure. I laid on the table. They wanted me to put my legs up, like, in a stirrup position. However, in that room, they didn't have stirrups, so you just had to sit your feet on the edge of the bed, which is, I guess, a good reason why I kept the shoes on, because the rubber helped me keep my feet not sliding off the table. Put my feet on the edge, scoot it to the end of the table, and they inserted the speculum, just like a pap smear, they inserted the speculum. Then they cleaned out my cervix with betadine, iodine, something. They cleaned off my cervix, and then that's, after, right after that, that's when the pain pretty much began. Um, I guess he inserted the catheter into my uterus, and then, I don't, I don't know what part he was doing. I know when he pushed the dye, though. After that, after he inserted the catheter into my uterus or my tubes, he inserted that contrast dye and oh my goodness, I felt every bit of it. Ooh, just to tell the story, it makes me cringe. Um, they pushed the dye, they wanted me flat on my back first, so they pushed it in when I was on my back and I told her, she was like, okay, just breathe, it's going to be okay. And I'm just the smiling like, okay, yeah, I feel it. And all of a sudden, I was like, ooh. Mm. And then she's like, yeah. At the beginning of the procedure, she said, as long as you don't say ouch and it hurts, we can keep going. But if you say ouch or if you say it hurts, we have to stop. So I made sure I didn't say any of that. So next thing you know, they did, they did it on my back. Then they want you to twist your hip to the side, like lay on your, tilt your hips some to the right side, then the left side. And boy, when I say that, it was so uncomfortable. For me, it was uncomfortable. Because I, you know, I don't have... 
period pains too much. They're not too harsh. So that for me was very uncomfortable. Um, they told me it would be a lot of pressure. It was a lot of pressure. I, I can't explain how it feels. It feels like someone's pinching something on the inside of me. But they pushed that dye through me, y'all. And oh my goodness. Uh-uh. I'm glad I won't have to do it again. They pushed the dye through me. And all I can remember is I was about to shed a tear. But I held it together because I did not want them to stop that procedure. And they said it was only going to be a few seconds. I believe when they were pushing the dye through, that pain and pressure lasted about 30 seconds to like two minutes I don't know it felt like it lasted longer than that but I, it was a short while but they pushed it through y'all and I was this is what I did I said mm, 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 ooh. <laughs> like ooh, that's how I felt like I just had to breathe 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 because oh my goodness y'all mm. I pray y'all don't have to go through this. It's it's terrible what a woman sometimes have to go through just to be able to conce conceive, to get pregnant. But, you know, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Sometimes that's what your purpose is. That's what's meant to be. So I got through the procedure. That was basically the end of it. Once they stopped with that, they pulled the speculum out and scooted in the table, put my clothes back on. Um, then they told me, oh, before after I put my clothes back on, before the PA walked out, he was like, well, your tubes look clear. Ah, thank you. I was so excited because I would not want to go through that procedure again. Um, he wasn't supposed to tell me that. Technically, you're supposed to wait for your doctor to tell you the results when you go back to your appointment. But I was happy he told me that little bit. So I will wait for the rest of the results when I go to the doctor's office. And she'll explain everything to me. Um, after the procedure, they sent me back in the waiting room. They wanted to make sure all the pictures were clear, and then they would release me. So, of course, everything was good. They released me, sent my results to the doctor. And I was not the one to get up. I was able to walk, basically. I was able to walk. I was cramping some, but I was able to walk. Um, so, technically, I probably could have drove myself, but, you know, they told me to have somebody else drive me. So, that's what I did. Um. So yeah, that's my story. And as of now, like I said, I, my skin is feeling okay. Don't have any reactions because the MRI contrast dye is different from the contrast dye they use with this procedure. So if you have any allergies to contrast dye, make sure you know whether it's the contrast dye from the MRI or either the CT because there's clearly multiple types. I didn't really know that even though I'm a nurse. I probably should have known that, but I don't I didn't really know that. So, make sure you know which dye you're allergic to. Um, but yeah, that's my story with my HSG procedure. Um, I'll let y'all know the updates with the results from my actual fertility specialist. So, hopefully everything goes good. Hopefully the doctor know what he was talking about, the PA. And I will let y'all know how those results end up. Keep praying for me. I'll be praying for y'all. You can do this. Like I said in the last video, you can do this. I got you, you got me, we got each other. <laughs> um, but I just like to share my story. I like to wish baby dust on all of y'all. Um, we can get through this together. Like, God put us here for a reason. Marriage is purposeful. Um, you're supposed to be fruitful and multiply. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to grace my fruits and multiply and expand my brand. <laughs> my Ray brand. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's my HSG procedure. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know down below. Um, please subscribe so you can follow my journey, so you can get any updates I have. Um, also hit the notification bell because that will basically let you know each time I upload a video and it will be easier to find me. Um, also, with the HSG procedure... Um, right after, what's, today? Today, yeah, today was my first time. I ordered some stuff offline, just some natural remedies. Um, I want y'all to check out my other videos. It's about these things that I'm about to show you. It's the Yi Mu Kale and uh, Zazan Kale, something. They're Chinese herbal teas. I found them off of Amazon. Um, 
and also Sarah Pepsi's. These are some natural products that I'm trying just to help me, help assist my body in prepping for conceiving. I'm not trying to stress and focus on actually getting pregnant right now. I just want to make sure my body, I just want to prep my body. I want to feel healthier um, naturally and not all these medications. I want some natural stuff like that tea is basically herbs healthy stuff, natural from the ground, something God made, even though God made everything, but that's what I have with that. Um, before my procedure, two days, this week I started the cinnamon and honey. I made some cinnamon and honey tea. Basically, I just took about half a teaspoon of cinnamon and I poured some honey and some in about a cup of hot water. Mix it together because that's supposed to help with PCOS, which I may have. They didn't say yet, but I may have that according to the way my follicles look on my vaginal ultrasound. So that helps with that PCOS and um, menstrual cycles regulating them. My cycles have pretty much been regulated now. I just have ovulation issues. However, God is working that out, y'all. God is working it out. But anyways... That's my HSG procedure. Make sure you go check out my other videos so you can learn about the natural way to get your body in shape, natural way to get your body right. I've done research. The teas are supposed to help um, your blood flow, help circulation in your reproductive organs, and that serapeptase is supposed to like remove mucus and secretions from the body. That helps with block twos basically also, like the scar tissue, it helps flush out your system. So that's some stuff I researched. The cinnamon helps with PCOS and um, menstrual cycles. So I just want to be happy. I want to be great. I want to give my husband something that he deserves. Um, I'm sure y'all want the same thing. And yeah, that's all. Just wish me luck. Me and my belly. Me and my bump. This is just a fat bump right now. However, in about... Let's say a few months, it'll be like thought, and I will be able to. <laughs> I'll be able to show off my little bump, but right now, I'll just be patient. I'm learning patience. It's all God's timing. Sometimes I used to say, Why me, God? Why me? Sometimes I still say, Why me? But now, and for the past few months, I've learned to say, Why not me? You know, God. Like, why not me? Use me, y'all. Use me, God. Like, why not put me in a situation so I can help somebody else? He chose me because maybe I'm strong enough. I, he knows I can handle this. Yes, I have stress or, yes, I have depression or whatever, but he knows I can handle this and he knows I can help somebody else. This is going to be my testimony. So, this is my testimony. I'm already claiming victory. I already know I got it. I already know I got what I asked for because the scripture says ask. I've already asked plenty of times. It says believe. I believe because I already know and I receive. And, you know, my seed is just growing slower than others, but it's growing. And I've received all these blessings, and I push my blessings to you all. I push anything great upon y'all guys. Um, ladies, just keep your faith. Trust in God. Don't give up. Um, and that's in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. So, yeah, that's my HSG procedure story. So, again, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching Cammy's Cam, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.